I've, I've always been a believer in the struggles men have in their minds, and I've always spoke about it, and I've suffered with them myself. And this is one of the things when I say, like, depression isn't real. People say, oh, you don't understand. Let me, let me counter that argument by saying, I understand very well. Me convincing myself and me deciding that depression isn't real is how I prevent myself from ever feeling depressed. And I can o I've can only constructed that mental model because I've been in situations in my life where I felt depressed. I'm not saying depression isn't real because I've never felt depressed. I'm saying depression isn't real because I've been very depressed. The people don't understand where my mindset comes from. I understand struggle and mental health and all these things. And yeah, jail was another chance to certainly touch on them because in jail, you can, in, sorry, in real life, when you have my kind of resource, you can distract yourself very easily. If you're sitting around and feel a bit mopey, if I'm sitting here and I'm a bit like, oh, I can literally make a phone call and 45 minutes be in the air on my way to anywhere on the planet with whoever I want to do anything I want. So you can distract yourself. I'm not saying it fixes all mental health, but it distracts you. Whereas in jail, you are stuck alone with your thoughts. And it was certainly a test of my mental resolve. And I would say that I passed. I, I did well. I, 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 there was never a day where I broke down. There was never a day where I couldn't handle it. There was never a day where I was, you know, I wasn't polite to the staff. I was very nice to everybody. There was never a day I couldn't hack it. It was certainly a test. And also, you know, Tristan said this. I don't want to take his words, but he's true. You go through life telling everyone you're the baddest motherfucker there is. Sooner or later, someone's going to test you. You walk in the pub and you say, I'm the hardest man there is. Sooner or later, someone's going to fight you. Sooner or later. And life's like that. You want to be the top G and you want to go through life and say, I'm the top G. Then God's going to say, well, we're going to see if you deserve to call yourself the top G or not. We're going to put you in a Romanian jail cell. We're going to leave you there to rot. You're not going to know how long you're in there for. And the biggest mindfuck is I thought I was going to be in there for years. I didn't. I had no idea. Everyone's telling me years, years, years. I thought I was going to be in there for years. So maybe God was just seeing, he was watching me and he was having a look and saying, you want to call yourself top G? Let's see. And I like to think I passed that test. So Tonight, it is what it is. But yeah, I agree with you. In, in terms of mental struggles, yeah, they exist for all men. And I also think that's one of the reasons I'm so large. I talk about those things a lot. I talk about those things a lot with men and I help men with them. And I try and say to men overall that life as a man is pretty shit. And you're going to feel shit for a pretty large percentage of the time. But you're only going to ever escape that if you just perform regardless. You have to perform when you feel bad. As a man, you can't say, I will perform when I feel good. It doesn't work that way because our heads are too complicated and life's too complicated. There's too much on our shoulders and we have too much stress and too much pressure. Our heads are fucked. You have to be the kind of person who says, I perform regardless. I didn't miss a single day's training. I didn't miss a please. I didn't miss a thank you. I'm not saying I was happy. I'm saying I did exactly what I was supposed to do. The worst thing about prison, I think, for everybody else, because there's a lot of men in there who were crying, a lot of men who were having mental breakdowns, I think it is the problem I didn't have, which is knowing that if you're a normal man, you go to jail, and they just pick you up and you go to jail. Who pays the rent? Who's feeding your kids? Who's your wife sleeping with? Like, like, life gets hard for all the external things you could no longer control, things that were your responsibility. I was lucky I didn't have those problems. And when I spoke to people, most people's issues were things that were happening on the outside. And I felt really good knowing that my life is set up in a way where even if I'm plucked from it, it operates. And I set that up because I thought they were going to kill me. Even to this day, if they shoot me right now, everyone around, everything would be okay. I don't have to exist for my life to function. So that was fantastic about jail. The worst thing about jail, I mean, the cockroaches started off really bad, but after a few days, it's amazing how quickly you used to cockroaches just in your bed. <laughs> You're just like, just kick them out of the way. That was kind of bad. But um, not knowing when I'm going to get out, that was bad. Having my name slandered all around the world, that was bad. Not knowing how people are reacting to it. Like the, my first time, month in jail, I didn't know if people believed this garbage or not. I, I had no access to the internet. I didn't see anything. There was a lot about it that was hard. But um, I, I have to believe it's going to make me a better person. Why else would I, why else did I go? What did I go for? To waste three months? To stare at a wall for three months? Is that why I went to jail? No, I must have gone to jail to become a better person. I must have learned something. I have to self-analyze and find the lessons and pick it out. And I think a lot of people don't do that with all the bad situations in their life. And regardless of whether you went to jail or a woman left you or your business failed, whatever it is, you need to analyze the entire situation and say, okay, what can I learn? There's a, there's a big pile of shit here, but there must be a little bit of gold inside. So I've just tried to look at it as a massive learning experience and perhaps as a coping mechanism, but I've found a lot of lessons which I'm implementing. And, uh, and there's a very strong chance they're going to put me back. 
not because I'm guilty, because I haven't done anything wrong, but because I'm currently in the middle of a, a, a judicial system. I'm in, in, I'm in the judicial system of a country. I don't truly understand the language. I don't understand the judicial system. I don't understand the charges against me. I don't understand how any of this can be legal. I don't understand how where it's come from. I don't understand the evidence they believe they have. And here I am stuck in this process. And who knows how it's going to end? There are moments in your life that you feel overwhelmed by life, by people, by your own circumstances, by struggles. We all get knocked down in every aspect of life. Life has a way of humbling you. Life will make you shut up. Life will mute you. You're going to feel awkward and stupid and dumb sometimes. At times you won't want to come out the house. At times you'll be feeling bad and don't know why. What's wrong? I don't know. Just leave me alone. You will cry. You're going to fail and you're going to be in your head. You're going to be saying, I'm not good enough. But it's okay. It goes with the territory. It's a part of the deal. The real challenge of growth comes when you get knocked down. You got to get messed up sometimes. You got to get dirty. You got to get your feelings hurt. You got to get disappointed. You're going to ask somebody for some money. He's going to tell you no. That's just dirt. How you handle it, that's where the growth takes place. You want to take responsibility for your life. I got me here, I can get me out of this. If somebody came and knocked you down, there ain't nothing you can do about it. But if I come back a week later and you're still on the ground, we got a problem. You can decide that you're going to change, that you're not going to be a wimp. The way you were born, what happened to you is not your fault. But doggone it, you're still on the ground after 20 years? See, you get tripped out because you got dirt on you. But you need dirt on you to develop. If you get knocked down, there's nothing you can do about it. But getting back up has every single thing to do with you. Don't you give up on your dream. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. See, you get mad when haters come your way. You get mad because you get a setback. You get mad because they talking about you. That's dirt. You are not the only person that's been through a divorce, boo. Get over it. You're not the first one they let go of. You won't be the last one. The question is, what you gonna do about it? I'm not going to be a volunteer victim. You can decide that you're going to stand up to life. I just need you to identify what your pain is. And then I need you to ask yourself what you're going to do about it. And maybe you've been knocked down in your life and it seems like, hey, the fight is over. It is not over unless you quit. You can permit it to let it hold you down or you can decide I'm not going to let that happen to me. You have a choice to either give up or get up. You got to get gritty, man. You got to develop some dog in you. You can decide, I'm going to work on myself and develop myself. I'm going to empower me. You have to learn to turn and look at every obstacle as an opportunity. I will not give up. Every time I get knocked down, I will get back up and I will succeed. I love myself enough not to be trapped in the same doggone spot for the rest of my life. No pain, no gain. Pain has a purpose. Your pain ain't permanent. It might last for a second. It might last for a minute. It might last for months. But sooner or later, if you do not surrender, if you do not give up, it will subside. Don't go through it. Grow through it. As pain leaves your body, guess what's going to take its place? Success. You cannot build anything that won't bring a battle. And if you're going through a battle right now, it's only because you're building something. Stop running from your pain and embrace your pain. What will you do with your pain? Will you let it break you or will you let it redefine? Your pain is going to be a part of your prize. I challenge you to push yourself. You want affirmation, look yourself in the mirror and say, I think I can, I know I can. You've got to decide to be relentless. You've got to decide never to give up. Do whatever it takes. You your biggest driver. You've got to find some reasons within yourself that will give you the stamina when life catches you on the blind side to keep on calling and coming back again and again and again. You see, the fight's not over if you've been knocked down. It's only over if you quit. Because life is a fight. It's a fight for integrity, your goals, your dreams, your ambitions. So every morning, I've got to wake up and I've got to fight. 
You gonna quit or you gonna make it to yourself? You gonna quit or you gonna make it to your goal? So you can stop waiting for it, you can stop wishing for it, and you can get on with the rest of your life. I gotta fight for my dreams. I gotta fight for character. I gotta fight for integrity. When you get to the point where enough is enough, doors start opening, opportunities start happening. But what you cannot do is you cannot quit doing the process. All I'm saying is don't quit. I just say don't rest. Mentally, you can stay connected. But to win fights, you got to have stamina. You got to be ready to fight and bounce back. You better not feel sorry for yourself. You better get up and fight. And some of you are not successful because every single time you run up against a trial, you stop. I need you to match whatever effort the enemy is putting up. Match the doggone effort. I'm going to think. I'm going to execute. And I'm going to win. And that's how you get to the next level. You cannot give up because it ain't what you see. You cannot give up. It's when you have nothing left. It's when you depleted all your money. When you have nothing left, that's when it's showtime. At the end of the day is your promise. So stop crying about it and use your energy to get through it. When you find a way out of no way, when you find breath that you don't have, when you want this thing as bad as you want to breathe, that's when you find a way. I cannot stop what happens to me, but I can dictate how I respond. I invested too much to quit. So when life happens, I don't just sit there and cry. I brought back. Because all of us, if you live long enough, will go through a period of feeling so overwhelmed. Sooner or later you feel, oh God, just get me out of this. I wish I could tell you it's going to get easier. I wish I could tell you that, but that's not the truth. The truth is you got to find something within. Life's going to whip your butt. Life is going to bully you. Stop crying. Let it hit you. But don't let it punk you. And when you find out what your why is, when you find your why, you find a way to make it happen. And I'm telling you right now, don't give up. Don't give in. Get through it. I don't care if you're sick. I don't care what you're going through. If you're not dead, he ain't through with you yet. As long as there's breath in your nostrils, you're still in the game. You're going to be here one day, but you'll never get here if you give up. As long as there's breath in your nostrils, you still can win. And finally, guys, you got to want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe. And you will promise me that from this day forward, you will not be defeated. Somebody holler, I'm not dead yet. <laughs> Don't count me out. I may be sick, I may be crazy, I may be confused, but I'm not dead yet. Some people live in the cemetery of their failures. And I want to say to somebody who's fallen, or everybody hates you, and everybody walked away from you, don't live where they left you. Nudge somebody and tell them I will not die here. Whatever it takes for me to get out, I got to get out of here. I will not die on drugs. I will not die in depression. I will not die where you met me. Number one motivating thing for me, and I'm just being honest, was I was sick and tired of being poor. My mother was poor, my father was poor, my brothers and sisters were poor. I lived in a poor neighborhood, we lived in a poor house. And I was, you know, like at Christmas time, my father would put us in the car and take us out to the suburbs to see the Christmas lights. And I would see these big houses, man. I told my father, I said, Dad, I said, why don't we get one of these houses? He said, boy, I ain't got no money for this kind of house. He said, but if you work hard, you can make some money, you can buy you one of these houses. My motivation was to buy a big house so I could put up Christmas lights. And I always dreamed of buying my mother and father a real house. And before they died, I was able to do all of that. You have to find a dream that's so big that it overwhelms all of your fears and causes you to never give up. Always go to something bigger than yourself. I'm wondering if you've been defeated because you have been giving yourself wholly to something that was too small to hold you. Are you trying to take a bath in a bowl? Are you not guilty of immersing yourself into things that were too small to hold your vision? Why you keep imagining buying a house 
Why do you keep imagining getting rich one day? Why do you keep imagining that? Because God is talking to you. You got to start believing in your imagination. I can never be depressed if I never slow down. Speed is extremely important. Speed defies gravity. How, do, how does a plane fly through the air and defy gravity? Speed. It's moving too fast to fall. If you're always attacking life, if you're always doing things, if you're always making more money, if you're always traveling the world, doing this, doing that, new car, here, there, new podcast, me and James English, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> you know, if you're always doing things all the time, unhappiness can't catch you. But I also know that Speed is a is a fantastic way to be happy all the time. I'm always looking forward. I'm always looking forward to something. I wake up every day excited. I'll go do this today. I'll go do this today. I'll go do this today. And I very much live my life in a frame of no, I, I have to do this. It's very much a, I get to do this. There's another thing that a lot of people make a mistake with when I talk to them. Like, oh, I have to go to work today. Change your language. I get to go to work today. Imagine you had no job. It'd be worse, right? Because otherwise you wouldn't be working. So you get to go to work. Oh, I have to fix the car. At least you have a car. You get to fix your car. Most people don't bought one. Oh, I have to go get the kids. You get to go get the kids because you have these beautiful children who love you. You understand? People's even their own language is wrong. It, the world is, can be framed. Maybe I'm completely crazy. Maybe I'm full of shit, like you said. Maybe I am. But the frames I've installed in my mind are all beneficial to me. So if that makes me crazy and full of shit, good. <laughs> because I can't become depressed. So you can sit there and tell me I'm full of shit while you're depressed, and I'm happy. And I would never want to adopt the thinking of a depressed person. People will, people will shield laziness with anything. No one wants to admit they're lazy. So they'll shield it with disbelief. Ah, oh, that's a scam. Or, I don't work hard, I work smart. Bollocks, more, more cover. For just, anything it takes to say, Do you I don't want to work. Do you believe in that work smart or not harder? I believe in both. Yeah. But there's a time when it comes to work smart. And most people are trying to do the smart work before they do the hard work. It's kind of like talent, right? You don't notice if you're talented at something until all the hard work's done. Yep. I could be the most talented tennis player in the world, but I don't play tennis. So if I go down the tennis court, Joe Schmo is going to smoke me. I don't get to see my talent until I've worked so hard that I'm in the top 1% and now I'm beating them because I have some God-given gift. Yeah. You understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to do the hard work first. If there's no hard work, there's no smart work. So someone's going to sit there and go, I work smart, I don't work hard, so I only have to work an hour a day. If working smart gets you a lot done in an hour a day, then you should work smart for 12 hours a day and yeah. get 12 times the work done. I, I am absolutely and utterly a believer in hard work. I'm a proponent of hard work. I have all this money and all I do is work. My entire life is work. This podcast is work. I'm getting in the car. I'm going to another meeting. Work. I want to go to the gym so I'm in good shape. Work. It's all work. My entire life is work. And people don't want to look at life that way. They want to talk about work-life balance and being lazy and all this crap. I don't believe in any of that. I believe in if you want to win, you have to outcompete the man who's prepared to do nothing but work. It's player versus player. If you're going to sit there and go, I don't want to work more than an hour a day, well, the guy who does want to work more than an hour a day is going to beat you. And no matter how smart you are, there's always a smart dude who's doing the same smart work you are for more hours than you're doing it. That's just the nature of the game. It's the way that humans work and the way that we are, we've evolved as a species is that we don't really learn lessons unless they're learned the hard way. Yeah. I believe that unless a lesson has taught the hard way, you're not going to learn it. You can have so many near misses and people won't learn their lesson. Bro, you must know a guy who goes out there, nearly crashes his car, nearly crashes his car, nearly crashes his car, doesn't slow his ass down until he wrecks it. Yeah. Like, this is how people are, right? So you need that pain for the lesson to sting enough to really genuinely go inside of your mind. And it's the same with everything. It's the same with driving a car or business. Truthfully, if you want to learn a lesson about business, you're going to have to suffer at some point, right? So we always say that most people are not successful with their first companies, X, Y, Z, blah, blah, blah. I get that. The truth is there's a lot of people who make a lot of money with their first company, but they just spunk it, act an idiot, and it all blows up in their face. And that's, the, and that's how you get the discipline on your fourth company that when you have three million in the bank, you just leave it there. You know, it's, yeah. and don't, and don't be done with it. So you need to, you need to go through some pain. You need to experience some negative things. You need to have to, uh, to a degree, some trauma to really even learn any lessons. So yeah, business studies, you're right. The book, 
that's that's not going to teach you anything about business. You need to get out there on the streets. You need to you need to make mistakes. You need to suffer. You need to have the tax man knocking at your door. You got to deal with all that stuff so that you make sure it doesn't happen again. I really think that, that humans are stupid enough to only learn the hard way. That's and, and life really doesn't have to be that complicated. When you see somebody that has something you want, you just got to try and work out how they got it. Yeah. And that's the missing part. Most people see people with things they want and they don't do the, the second half. They don't try and work out how they got that thing. Oh, my man has a Ferrari. Okay. I wish I had a Ferrari. Okay. They don't sit there and go for an hour. How did you get a Ferrari? It doesn't cross that. That part is the part they don't want to do, right? They just go, oh, he's a Ferrari. Wish I had a Ferrari. And they go back to TV. Yeah. And that's why they lose. It's player versus player out here, man. It's on the street. It's not easy. For every dollar you make, for every pound you take, you took it from someone else. You don't make money. You take money. People don't understand the way that money works. You're not the Federal Reserve. You can't create money from thin air. Every single pound in your bank is money you took from someone else. And when I say take, I don't mean it in a negative way. You might have convinced them to give it to you. You might have a coffee shop. I'll give you a nice coffee. You'll give me some money. Cool. But you still took his money, yeah. right? So if you're out here trying to take stuff from other people, don't you want to have a team? You want to do it by yourself? You want to be Rambo? Because you I mean, get two of you doing it. You get two of you. you. That's right. So the whole idea of this lone soldier, this Rambo, I'll do it all by myself. That's all dead, bro. You need to have a team. It's player versus player. And for the same reason, if you were out here on the street and you want to defend yourself, you want your boys around you. It's the same thing with trying to get rich. And you're laughing with your boys. Yeah. The brokey days are great. And I'm not complaining about being rich. Obviously, I worked hard for this and it's, and it's a fantastic life I live now. But I think without those brokey days, without those original days to compare it to, without that juxtaposition, then I don't think being rich would be fun at all. I think it's only fun because you can compare it to the days when you weren't rich. That's the only thing that makes it fun. The only thing that makes my $10,000 stake fun is that you can laugh saying how you never had 10 grand in your bank till you were 27 years old. Yeah. Like that's the, otherwise it's boring. Otherwise you okay, steak. And I think if you're born with too much money that you'll never truly be happy. I think you need the broken days are the best days. The best yeah. days. You meet somebody wealthy, their family at one point was not wealthy. And then the one shows up. One person changes the family tree forever. In my family, I'm the one. And it wasn't because I wanted it or I hoped for it. I fought for it. I want to fight for my family. I want my mom and dad proud of me. I want me proud of me. I want to look in the mirror and be happy with the man I look back at. That he gave it everything. That he went for it. That's what I want for you. I want you to be happy with you, not cool. I've seen all kinds of cool guys my whole career. Cool guys go broke. They have a good two or three years. Players who implement strategies that get focused and intense, they win decades. You gotta win year after year after year. I'm almost 50 years old, man. I've got a loaded calendar. I'm after it. I'm not casual. I wanna win. You hear me? Wake up! You wanna win? You wanna be a millionaire? You gotta quit being so casual. You walk slow, you implement things slow, you talk a good game, like you're gonna be somebody. Business is a sport, it's competitive. You gotta get focused and get in a hurry. Wake up, brother. If you make a couple of these adjustments, man, you could change your life. You could change your family forever. It's not casual. You can change the chapters in the book of your life if you want to. You're the author. It might be year two, three, four before you get your big win, but you could decide now, I'm gonna walk, talk, and be a different person. You're the lead character in the story of your life. But too many of you let the, what I call the extras of life dictate where you're going. Y'all hear me? Here's the truth. Most people's dreams can be bought. With enough failure, they will sell their children's dreams. They can't still fight. With a little success or a whole bunch of failure, most people will sell their will to win. Some of you have sold it because you're making a little bit of money. You don't work like you did when you were making nothing. Some of you will sell your win for some failure. You're probably viable, but if you decide that my will cannot be bought, I'll keep fighting for my family. I'm the one. I'm gonna change my family tree forever. Decide now, you're gonna keep negotiating the price or can you not be bought? That is you. That is you that no one can do it for you but you. You must understand that. I remember I was playing a game with my nine-year-old son, John Leslie, and I beat him 10 straight games in a game called Connect Four. And I got up, I said, I'm ready to go to sleep now. John Leslie said, no, you can't go now, Dad. I said, why? He said, it's not over until I win.
We sat down and we played several other games. And finally, John Leslie won and he got up and he yawned. And he said, I'm ready to go to sleep now. What if all of us took that attitude after we face a rejection and a no, or we have a meeting and no one shows up? What if we have that kind of attitude, the cause repossessed, nobody believes in you, but you're still looking at your dream, say to yourself, it's not over until I win. It's possible. I can live my dream. It's me. I've got to make it happen. It's not over until I win. As you run toward your dream, it's necessary that you have goals, that you write those goals down, that you plan. It's also necessary that you look for ways to always find a way to pull it out when everybody else thinks that you are defeated. But the next thing, ladies and gentlemen, I want to share with you that some of you already know that it's hard. It was hard when just over three years ago, and I fell on some hard times, and I was sleeping in my office. It was hard coming into the lobby, and the security said, can we see you for a moment? And he gave me an envelope. And the envelope was from management that said, this is an office tower. Do not sleep in your office. And it was hard coming through the lobby. And sometimes they would laugh. There's a guy talking about becoming successful. He's bathing in the bathroom upstairs. He sleeps on the floor. Look at him. It was hard, ladies and gentlemen, coming to speak to people. I was behind on my bills and my dreams, and I'm saying to them, you can live your dream. It was hard, ladies and gentlemen. There were times that I doubted myself. I said, God, why, why is this happening to me? I'm not trying to steal a rob from anybody. How did this have to happen to me? And here's what I want to say to you. Don't give up on your dream. No one could have convinced me by holding on, by continuing to push forward, that one day I would have my own talk show from Liberty City in an abandoned building on a floor, never knowing my mother or father. It's a long shot. No college training, labeled, educable, mentally retarded. But I kept running toward my dream. Don't stop. Don't stop running toward your dream. There are moments when you're going to doubt yourself. There are rough times that are going to come, but they have not come to stay. They have come to pass. It's very important for you to believe that you are the one. Begin to envision yourselves as being blessed and highly favored to reach your goals that you can make your parents proud, you can touch millions of people's lives, and the world will never be the same again because you came this way. But that's why you're here, because you are the one. It's not going to be easy. It was hard laying on the floor, looking out of the window, daydreaming, saying, Les, can you do this? Can you make this happen? And something said within me, you're the one, you're the one.